comes to monitor lizards or goannas, most people are of course going to think of big lizards. And it's fair enough, the biggest lizards in the world are of course monitor lizards. But Australia is home to a wide variety of dwarf monitor lizards. And the most sort of well-known dwarf monitor lizard is this guy here, the ridge-tailed or Aki monitor. So stick around guys, we're talking about one of the coolest little lizards that Australia's got. <laughs> So there's actually a wide variety of small monitor lizards found in Australia. They fit into the subgenus what we call Odactria, which is dwarf monitors, found in uh, Australia and Papua New Guinea. Now, the ridge-tailed monitor, this guy here, is one that's found in arid environments throughout Western Australia, bottom part of the Northern Territory and into Western Queensland. Now, they're not found in big sandy expanses, which you might think of as Central Australia. They prefer arid rocky areas, rocky outcrops, places with lots of stone to hide amongst. Throughout this range, there's actually a couple of different subspecies. One found in the western half, one found in the eastern half, and there's also a small population of them living on a set of islands just north of Darwin in the Northern Territory. And that population uh, is believed it could one day be classified as its own species. But for now, it makes three subspecies of ridge-tailed monitors. One of the things that of course makes the ridge-tailed monitor so recognizable is of course the ridged tail. These guys have little spines going all the way down their tail that all face backwards. And this is a defensive mechanism. Like I said, these guys live in and under and amongst rocks. It's what we call saxicolous, animals that are dependent on rocks. And uh, by having these point, spines that point backwards means if these guys run in head first, all the spines point backwards, you can't pull them out. It serves as an anchor to stop a bird or a predator pulling them out from between those rocks. So it's a really useful defensive mechanism for an animal that lives in rocks. And it's actually something that other animals have evolved as well. The Cunningham skink or the Gidgee skinks as well. They're great examples of unrelated animals they've evolved the same trait. They live amongst rocks, so they've got these backwards facing spines. It's a fantastic example of convergent evolution. One trait that works so well that unrelated animals have evolved on the same idea. Living in arid environments means that these guys have to be pretty water efficient. And 70% of their moisture requirements are met by the food they eat. Now the vast majority of their diet in the wild is grasshoppers, followed by things like beetles, uh, but these guys will eat pretty much anything that moves that they can catch. So other bugs, spiders, other lizards, small dragons, small skinks, anything that they can catch. But grasshoppers, things like that, make up the vast majority of their diet. They're little raptors, little carnivores that cruise around the rocks eating whatever they can get their claws on. Like all goanna species, these guys are egg layers. They lay a clutch for about 20 eggs at the end of the dry season. These eggs incubate for 100 or so days over the course of the wet season. The humid air helps these guys incubate. And when they hatch, they're about 10 centimeters long. Now these guys mature at only 12 months old. So by the time they're a year old, they're basically adults. And these guys can produce a couple of clutches a year here in captivity. So these guys have a really fast uh, you know, maturity. These guys grow really quick, take advantage of the good seasons that they get out there because it's a pretty hostile environment to live in. Once they've reached maturity at 12 months, these guys can live to be to about 15 years of age in captivity. And they actually make fantastic pets. My first pet reptile was in fact a ridgetail monitor. And where I were visiting Lilydale High School, we might do a video on, on the care and requirements for a ridgetail monitor at some point in time, because they're really cool lizards. They're kept fairly similar to a bearded dragon, but much hotter. They're uh, active. And if you're looking for a goanna as a pet, the vast majority probably aren't very suitable, but the ridgetailed goanna is kind of like having a Komodo dragon in a tiny package. These guys are amazing animals. Now, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the ridgetailed goanna, and I hope you've uh, you know, learned a couple of cool facts today, but if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out on Facebook, and while you're on Facebook, check out Lilydale Reptile Room. That's the facility that this guy comes from today. They're a high school that uh, has a large collection of Australian reptiles and amphibians, where the students actually help look after the animals. They breed them, they care for them, and they learn all about keeping and caring for Australian wildlife. And they've been kind enough to let us come and film at their facility. So check out their Facebook page, leave a comment, tell them Wicked Wildlife sent you. Check on back here next week for more cool Australian wildlife. And between now and then, be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.